welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Acting President Yemi Oshibajo signs 2017 appropriation bill into law, making history as Nigeria's first acting president to sign a budget. Activists and other Nigerians commemorate the victory of MKO Abiola in the June 12, 1993 presidential election. Some recommend replacement of May 29th with June 12 as Democracy Day. Kaduna State Governor sacks 4,776 traditional rulers in one fell swoop. And thousands of opposition protesters hit the streets over massive corruption in Russia. Police clamped down on demonstrations, arresting over 1,000. And that's a quick reminder to you that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 apps will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature, which you, you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Most of the states in Nigeria's southwest region are observing today, Monday, June the 12th, as a public holiday to commemorate the 1993 presidential election. On this day, 24 years ago, Nigerians trooped out in their numbers to vote for MKO Abiola, who was later robbed of his victory by the then military regime headed by retired General Ibrahim Babangida. MKO Abiola was arrested and detained for years, and he later died in 1998. It was the first presidential election held in Nigeria since 1983 when the military took over in a coup. At that time, M.K. Abiola of the Social Democratic Party defeated Bashir Tofa of the National Republican Convention, the NCP. The election is adjudged one of the freest and fairest in Nigeria's democratic history. And the residents of the late MKO Abiola attracted many today as rights activists and several eminent Nigerians and some family members commemorated the annulment of the June 12 election. The issues of restructuring and national unity were prominent, with the day's theme being June 12, movement and hope of equitable restructuring for Nigeria. Our political correspondent Shion Okimbaloye reports. Some say it was perhaps the freest and fairest election in Nigeria's democratic history. A dynamic and rare political ticket, despite religion, MK Abiola and Babagana Kingibe both gave the Social Democratic Party SDP a national mandate. There was, in fact, a huge array of electoral practices. The military junta shot the democratic process and a major republic in the foot at its tender age. Take a look at the manifesto MQ Abiel and his party ran with. Sadly, there hasn't been any more difference in Nigeria's story 24 years after. This is the residence of the late MQ Abiela, and here, activists, family members, and eminent Nigerians gather to commemorate the 1993 election. Want to make this brief because we are still yet the issues of restructuring in Nigeria is dominant in the conversation and perhaps this year's theme resonates loudly on the current political and social conversations. Our judgments have be clouded and the majority of Nigerians don't really know the truth. Nigerians did not learn much from June 12, 1993 because the Fourth Republic was ambushed before it was embarked upon. Like a musical chair, our song remains the same, but where do we go from here? We need the sovereign national conference. Sound the opinions of people. Let them come and speak up. And when they speak up, let them make proposals. What President Muhammad Buhari should do now is to immediately constitute a national peace and unity committee made of eminent Nigerians. The scar of the death of MQ Abiola may still be very evident in the heart of the Abiola family. Aye, aye, 
take a look at Abdul Abiola, a little boy then 24 years ago, who returned from the football pitch to meet his dad, perhaps unaware of some of the political tension at the time. But now, today, the two channels television, the essence of their father's sacrifice on the nation's democracy. It is 24 years later, and so if we're talking about somebody's legacy or dreams being in vain, think about that, that 24 years, people are still talking about what he did. Every year, eminent Nigerians gather at the graveside of the late philanthropist, late MKO Abiola, commemorating the annulled 1993 presidential election. Two decades after, so many issues confronting the nations are still on the table, and it brings the question whether or not Nigerians have learned from that experience from the late MKO Abiola's residence in Ikeja, Lagos. Shane Walking Baloye reporting for Channels Television News. Now, there were several other activities to mark the day. Now we bring you this report on how states in the southwest of Nigeria commemorated the June 12 anniversary. Governors of the southwestern region of Nigeria remember Moshud Kashimawo Olawale Abiola, the acclaimed winner of the 1993 presidential election. Even in death, MKO remains Nigeria's democratic icon whose election in 1993 wiped off ethnic sentiment and rekindled hope of a true federalism for Nigeria. These state governors vow to relive his legacy to coming generations. The governor of his home state of Ugun, Senator Ibikula Amosu, leads the pack with a solidarity walk to the ancestral home of the Abiolas in Abeokuta. We are happy, we are privileged, we are grateful to Almighty God that Chief M. K. O. Abiola is from here in Abiokuta. Indeed, this is his place, and that's why we are all here. But the struggle that he died for transcends the shores of Abiokuta here, of Ogun State, of the entire Southwest. Indeed, transcends even Nigeria. Lagos State, just like others in the Southwest, declared the day work free, all in honor of a man who has been described severally as a philanthropist and democratic freedom fighter. Speakers at a symposium organized by the state government in conjunction with the June 12 coalition of democratic formations are also asking for true federalism. We see for the First Republic that we have witnessed since 1999 was sown and watered by the blood of men and women who were cut down in their prime. Their memories will be honored until the end of time. Right activists are also pushing for a common agenda as they remember June 12. It is incumbent on the federal government of Nigeria to declare MKO Abiola as president of Nigeria post Umole. In Delta State, the story is different. Leaders of the National Association of Nigerian Students are calling for proper restructuring of the federal system of government. They also promise to join hands to preserve the country's democracy and unity. We call on the federal government to continue to strengthen our democratic institutions aimed at promoting an egalitarian society for all. As Nigerians continue to relive the memories of the late MKO Abiola 24 years after, they all have a common demand, restructuring the country and growth of Nigeria's democracy that will last for generations. Now, everyone in the country knows MKU Abiola won the 1993 presidential election. But as it turned out, that election was annulled. His pronouncement sparked off a series of protests which culminated in the imprisonment of Chief Moshuda Abiola. Now, let's bring you some of the highlights of that election. Twenty-four years ago, on June 12, the world still still for Nigeria to witness an unprecedented event. An election that will be dubbed the freest and fairest. The result of the election was without doubt. Moshud Kashima Wabiola of the Social Democratic Party defeated his rival of the National Republican Convention, Bashir Tofa, convincingly. 
but somewhere in the corridors of power, the decision was rescinded and the election annulled. It is true that the presidential election was generally seen to be free, fair, and peaceful. However, there was, in fact, a huge array of electoral practices virtually in all the states of the Federation. This was met with stiff resistance. Assuming there was good faith on the part of government, all matters relating to the election should have gone to the tribunal set up by law for such cases and should only have been initiated by persons or bodies that had genuine interest in the election. Instead, we are being told that the judiciary behaves so badly that I, Mashur Kashima Wala Wale Abiola, should be penalized for his conduct. It is incredible. In view of all this, I find the conclusion unfortunate but inescapable that the federal British government is guilty of bad faith, pure and simple. No one has accused me of any offense against any known electoral law or regulation. The people of this country went to polls on Saturday, June 12, 1993, and without let or hindrance, chose me as their president. Didn't they? They do. The streets became filled with protesters demanding the return of their mandate. But the military junta had other plans. All the happenings was covered by Channel's television, whose team followed the events all the way. Took out in their millions to vote for a presidential candidate. What compounded the already heated controversy was the death of the politician, which was viewed as an attempt to stamp out democracy from Nigeria. The tempo is rising, and I'm talking at the level of the masses of our people. And from the crowd you have seen in court today, and there are some of them who have introduced themselves from um, coming from the east or from the north and different parts of the country. And I think the mass boycott that has greeted the revision of voters' register has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the Nigerian people have made up their mind and that the tempo is rising. As it stands, Nigerians hold two days to heart that connects them to democratic freedom, May 29 and June 12. Which holds more relevance is a debate that will always be heated. But one thing is certain, June 12 still holds the title of what free and fair represents in the meaning of democracy for Nigeria. Oralu Ashonibare, Channel Television News. And when the news at 10 returns, central bank interventions in the foreign exchange market continue as the regulator injects over $400 million into the system. That's on business. He joins again.